Greetings my friends. Today I have a what I think is an interesting video for you and I'll start with the Mauser 98 which I've talked about a lot. I'm looking at a Peruvian Mauser and we'll just take a minute and the camera can can look at the action which everybody's familiar with. I was lucky enough to buy this not that long ago and it's kind of a starting point I realize that some people say I talk about Mausers too much, and maybe I do, but I thought uh, in order to tell the story that I have to tell you today, we have to start with the Mauser 98. So this is an exceptional action, probably, probably the best rifle action ever made, and um, I don't need to say much more about it, other than after the war, um, of course, German engineering was not in the best shape, but there were a lot of engineers with a lot of ideas and much had been learned. And so the concept for the Mauser 66S emerged, which is the action here. And I remember sitting with a, an engineer. Um, I'm not sure that he worked for Mauser, or maybe he did. Anyway, it was a lot of years ago. And I said, well, why didn't you just keep making the Mauser 98 and he said well there are millions of Mauser 98s around and um, we need to come up with we needed to come up with something different so the Mauser 66 which you can see here is the bolt handle location is different this remarkable telescopic action and I know you've seen this in other videos that I've made but it's not a bad idea to see things side by side. And I have that advantage because of my, because of the size of my collection. So this is the 98 and this is the 66. But you can see what they're up to. The 66 has dual locking lugs at the front of the bolt. So, is the, so does the Mauser 98. Um, in order to shorten the length of the action, the Mauser people, engineers, came up with this telescoping telescoping design and then you know they they included some just wonderful instruments inside of the action <clears throat> which i'm familiar with but we would need two hours in order for me to go through all those details and uh so i uh, this action this video is actually not about mausers it's about blazers but there you can see the mauser 66 and the mauser 98 side by side and even though you read about these, um, it's difficult to actually see them together. So the benefit of the Mauser, of course, the 66, is that it's a much shorter action. Anyway, um, and I, some people say I should talk about calibers. Uh, this is an 8x68, and this is similar to a 7x57, but it's not quite. And um, no need to go into military history or cartridge design. But countries, some countries wanted unique cartridges for their rifles. So now we've looked at the Mauser 98 again. And as you can see, it's an unmodified um, military rifle. And now we can set that aside and, and the 66. And I've invited our camera person to, to uh, use the camera throughout filming and maybe go back over some of the rifles that are on the table. Some viewers mentioned that I show something and then they wish that that, I, that they could see it again because they have an idea or they're thinking about something. So we'll try to do that and then maybe by chance we'll, we'll um, go over something that you, you wanted to see. So Mauser 66, Mauser 98. Um, then along comes this company, Blazer. And I can't go into the origins of Blazer although that's a history worth reading. I'm always limited by time, and I don't want to bore you all. Although, to me, it's quite interesting. Anyhow, you, you remember the 66 we looked at a moment ago. This is the Blazer SR830, and you can see this is obviously not a Mauser 98. Um, this is a much shorter action. Now, unlike the Mauser 66, which is telescoping, this extraordinary action runs on rails. And I know I've talked about um, 
the smoothness of rifle actions, and I've primarily compared Mauser actions and Remingtons and, and those kinds of actions. Uh, but these unusual actions um, have a way of operating that's, that's quite unique. And because of the engineering principles that are involved, they're able to accomplish things that a regular action can't accomplish. So that's a lot of words. And all it, it leads up to is that this action is smoother. It's hard to describe how smooth this action is. Um, I actually was looking at it in detail with another uh, gun person before filming. And there's just, it's, it's an effortless action. Um, Blazer really came up with something. For a while, they called this rifle the ultimate rifle. Uh, this forend pops off easily. You undo the screw, and this barrel comes off, and you can put a different caliber on. And you can see the machining of the barrel, um, how carefully they've made the flats of the octagonal barrel, and then it goes to round here. So they wanted to really make a fine hunting rifle and it has skip line check ring some people call it French uh, style check ring and the operation of the rifle is quite simple now you'll notice unlike the Mauser 66 it's worth it to go back you'll see this bolt handle like the 98 has to lift up quite high then it goes back in order to shorten the action they made it telescopic so this part goes into the let's call it the frame of the action, then the entire bolt assembly can move backwards. The Blazer, I guess they didn't like the 66 design. I'm not even sure they were influenced by it, but I assume they were. The, they installed rails, which are hard to differentiate from the rest of the action. They also went to a three lug bolt. And we talked about this in a recent video. The advantages of the advantage of a three lug bolt is that you, you um, can have minimal bolt lift. So these lugs are unlocked. And talking about smoothness again, it's one of the few actions where you can close everything with almost no effort. Now you may, those of you that own Blazer R93s and R8s, this may mean something. You can see the origin of the concepts that resulted or culminated in the R8. They wanted the short action. They wanted a different type of bolt system from the Mauser 98. The magazine assembly is quite unique and here we have three locking lugs. And we have a, a barrel that can be removed and the entire rifle is quite different from a Mauser 98. So those guiding principles seem to have um, stuck with Blazer, and I'll draw to your attention again this turn bolt which is very smooth but you can see the bolt handle is a little for, far further away from the trigger than in the Mauser 98 or the Mauser and, and the Mauser 66 is the same it's further forward in case you didn't notice that which you probably did you can see it's it's a distance away and um, so getting back to the Blazer they made this one, uh, just running through the operation. Uh, this operates kind of, it, it, it's for caulking and uncaulking. It's a bit like a hammer. So that's, the, the action is caulked now. And to uncaulk the action, you depress this button and, and lower the, let's call it hammer. Um, if the action is caulked, then you can lock the bolt handle by depressing that button. Now it won't open. Then you move it the other way. And every operation on this blazer is absolutely seamless and perfect. And the trigger is, well, it's not cocked now. Now it's cocked. It's, it's, a, it's a perfect trigger. It has quite unique scope mounts, which you can see here and here. I have them. I just didn't want to clutter up filming with that. So blazer SR830, and um, they put a, a very good quality walnut, but not overdone and then a European style cheek piece. Some people like it, some people don't. Um, the action is aluminum. So this gun is, I don't know, seven pounds. The caliber is 300 Winchester Magnum. And um, I have to say, overall, this is 
an extraordinary weapon. It wasn't particularly popular. Uh, they were they were making something quite unique, but you can tell, be, and, and we have the advantage of knowing what happened next, that they were unhappy with this turn bolt and the location of the bolt handle. So then the next thing that came along um, after some years was the Blazer R93. And um, you probably can't see the heritage too well because this is the one piece stock model which I ended up with. I had a couple of these and the R93 is actually um, started out as this SR830 and you can see some heritage that they they stuck with the concept of a short action rails you can see the rails on the on the R93 or maybe not that well but there they are R93 and 830 <clears throat> but at some point the engineering department must have decided that if they want a really revolutionary design they have to get away from the turn bolt locking and so they came up with the expanding collet and thanks to all of you for writing um, some of you obviously are engineers and um, now explained how this gun locks and I'm going to show you an R8 in a moment the R93 has a slightly smaller locking surface than the R8 that it's, it's, I'm not sure if you can pick that up. I've shown this on a prior video, but a lot of people wonder how do these guns lock, and actually some people are nervous about how they lock. But there's no way that these guns will ever come undone, and I just get my pencil here. So the locking surface is here, and it locks inside the barrel. So when you close the bolt, the cartridge is placed in the chamber, and then this is the last motion you make before the gun is fired. And this is radial, it goes around the whole act, the whole chamber. So you have all of these surfaces. Again, this can be calculated, but I didn't bother doing that. And as a consequence, um, I mean, of course, accidents happen with every gun. People do all kinds of things with reloads and whatnot. But that's the R8. The R93, um, it has a slightly different configuration here. The profile of the collet is slightly different. It's, they wanted it to be smooth, so they set the collet at an angle, and on the R93, they were confident enough to make it a flat surface, a vertical collet, and so um, that, that surface is a lot larger. It's an altogether bigger action. And of course, the R8 went from the design where the, the rounds are here to a removable magazine which we've looked at before uh, some people like that some people don't anyway it's exceptional engineering but the original concepts uh, were the R originated with the SR 830 and actually it was just to kind of take a walk through the history of firearms and I am in a unique position to to have these different rifles and and I can examine them and see um, how they worked. So it took a long time for them to come up with the R8. Uh, it's kind of an evolutionary process. Now you're probably wondering what is this? Because it's an odd looking creature. This is a 22 um, R93. And I didn't buy these unit, this adaption unit. You can see the magazine comes in from the side. And, um, but I may as well I'm just going to make a separate video. I may as well just make the video now. So you remove this barrel. You remove the barrel by undoing two bolts here with an Allen key. And the, in this case, the barrel is a 22, and it has the entire action here. And you can see that you install it a separate bolt assembly. It looks like a typical 22 here. And this must be the strongest 22 on earth because the same radial locking that locks the center fires, locks this this action. And um, it works flawlessly. I have a spare magazine, uh, so you just pop in some ammo and, and um, ejects out the left side. So it's quite unique and I'm not sure they make these anymore, but they're around. 
uh, I can't remember where I bought this, Eurooptic, I think it was. I can't remember where they're located. Um, and it takes the, the Blazer scope mounting system, which fits the R8 um, and the R93. So um, kind of, uh, again, a little bit of a, um, let's say, convoluted video. But I'm, if, you, if you have a chance to get these, and uh, if, you, if you're interested in um, an exceptional stage in firearms design, this Blazer SR830, I think they actually called it the ultimate rifle for a period of time. And this one is marked Blazer SR830 West Germany. So the fact that it's noted as West Germany can give you an idea of the time period involved. And uh, cartridges loaded and loaded from the top because there's no way to get them out from the bottom. And the other features I've discussed, I'm probably missing something. As always, your questions and comments are welcome. And um, I think that's just about it. Um, in summary, I probably have to say this Blazer company is so foreign to, uh, let's say, North American gun designers, because who would think of making a locking collet? Uh, I've read a lot of books and maybe I've missed something, but I never came across this concept uh, that is deployed in the R8 and the R93, exceptional firearms, and this 22, if you can get one, they're not cheap, but that doesn't matter. The value will, will only go up. That's an exceptional um, concept and that they went to the trouble of making it is remarkable. And then of course these ultimate rifles, the SR830, and the some of you may like the R84 better because the bolt handle is located right here. It doesn't matter to me. Um, I think I think they're fine. It's actually worth it just to, 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 to operate the action, to see what I would call great minds at work. Um, and obviously they had a significant engineering budget uh, last comment, this length of pull on this, I measured it right before filming, is 14 inches. But because of the angle of the pistol grip, um, something about this rifle, it's almost ideal in ergonomics. I don't know what they did. Anyhow, remarkable rifle. You won't see too many of them, that's for sure. And um, worth owning. Uh, definitely worth collecting. Uh, unique and hard to compare with anything else. So, um, and, and really, if anybody from Blazer is, is uh, watching, uh, you've done an exceptional job. It's very difficult to come up with something that is popular and unique. And uh, as the guy who worked for Mauser told me, we, I, I said, well, why don't you just keep making Mauser 98 bolt actions? Um, and he said, well, we want to come up with something different. And I said, well, probably something better. And he said, no, no, there won't be anything better than a Mauser 98, but we have to make something different or else we won't sell any guns. So they made the Mauser 66 and Blazer ended up making these um, R93s and R8s. But I don't know, there's something about this SR830. I don't mind these locking lugs and uh, just the way the whole thing works, I kind of consider it um, some kind of masterpiece of gun making. Anyway, that's about it. Uh, please keep writing. Um, I appreciate all of your comments. Some remarkably uh, sharp and intelligent questions. Obviously, there are people around the world interested in guns, and that's a good thing. So thanks again, and um, I'll be back soon with more videos. Take care.